children today we are going to start lesson with the rhyme okay which you have learnt in your lower classes corona corona go away never come again another day little children wants to play and study okay na no? okay now we are going for the lesson part subject biology class 9 unit 3 yeah lesson respiration in plants okay children any organism if you take they require energy likewise plants also require energy why do they require energy to do certain activities like intake of food liberation of energy excretion photosynthesis etc all these activities together called in three phenomena namely metabolism metabolism is the sum total of all chemical and energy changes taking place in living organism so metabolism occurs in two groups of processes number 1 anabolism the sum total of life processes resulting in the building up of the living substances are protoplasm that means anabolic processes are constructive biosynthetic processes which consume energy anabolism builds molecules required for the body functionality body's functionality that means to for the body's to function properly catabolism catabolism is the sum total of life processes resulting in the breakdown of protoplasm got it that means catabolic processes in are destructive or breaking down processes it gives out energy for use by the organism catabolism breaks down the big complex molecules into smaller easier to absorb molecules understood now like all other organisms we have learned plants also do the resp respiration and what do the respiration come under respiration comes under catabolic process so respiration definition respiration is a catabolic process of releasing energy by breaking down glucose for carrying out life processes so what do you understand by this the glucose which we have taken in will be broken down by the usage of oxygen and gives out carbon dioxide water and energy all these reactions takes place with the help of enzymes so all living cells respire children all plant cells respire building up of proteins from amino acids making starch from glucose absorbing minerals from the soil or lay down of cell walls by plant cells all such activities require energy which we get by respiration got it so simple carbohydrate breaks down and gives out energy this and this reaction is represented by an equation c6 h12 o6 plus 6 o2 in the presence of en enzymes give rise to 6 carbon dioxide that is 6 co2 plus 6 h2o plus energy is it clear now the breaking down of glucose will take place in important series of reactions three important characteristics of respiration equate in the equation are first one the breaking down of glucose to carbon dioxide and water it does not occur in a single step chain it occurs in many series of chemical steps those steps you will be learning in your higher classes overall reaction only are learning here is that clear these steps occur in two major phases namely glycolysis glyco means glucose lysis means split so glucose will split into pyruvate molecule that occurs in cytoplasm in phase 2 krebs cycle krebs cycle here pyruvate molecule will give out an energy molecule called atp adenosine triphosphate 
This occurs in a site called mitochondria. Glucose, glycolysis, in the cytoplasm, no oxygen is required. And two pyruvate molecules comes out and the Krebs cycle takes place in mitochondria. Oxygen is required here and six carbon dioxide, six water and 38 ATP molecules will come out. Now, each breakdown step is due to particular enzyme. That is why these are called enzyme catalyzed reactions. The breakdown will take place in a particular enzyme. Is that clear? So, the energy liberated in the breakdown of glucose molecule is not all in the form of heat, but a large part of it is converted into a chemical energy in the form of ATP. ATP adenosine triphosphate. Is that clear? When energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate is used, the ATP is converted into an ADP, adenosine triphosphate. And again, when more energy is available by further breakdown of glucose, the ADP is reconverted to ATP. Is it clear? So, you understood now how ATP, ADP conversion. Before going for that, we are going to learn the differences between glycolysis and Krebs cycle. First, glycolysis. It is an anaerobic process in which molecule of glucose is converted into two molecules of pyruvic acid. It takes place in cytoplasm. Krebs cycle. It is an anaerobic. It is anaerobic. Please make a note, children. An anaerobic. Anaerobic. This is the difference. That is, glycolysis is an anaerobic process. Process. Krebs cycle is an aerobic process that takes place in the mitochondria that involves the oxidation of pyruvic acid into water and carbon dioxide. Now we are going to learn this in the tabular column. Glycolysis, one side. Krebs cycle, one side. Glycolysis is the first step in respiration in which glucose is broken down into two pyruvate. Krebs cycle is the second step of respiration in which it degrades into pyruvate into inorganic substances, namely water and carbon dioxide. Glycolysis occur inside the cytoplasm. Krebs cycle occur in the, inside the mitochondria. Glycolysis, no carbon dioxide is evolved. In Krebs cycle, carbon dioxide is evolved. Oxygen is not required in for glycolysis, whereas oxygen is required for Krebs cycle. So earlier we were talking about how food gets changed into body. So it, it breaks down, food gets break down into ATP and ADP, continuous liters. It is a continuous form. First it becomes, first energy becomes ATP. In that process, little heat, little water, little carbon dioxide is released. Where do these reactions occur? They occur in body cells. Is that clear? So first they become ADP. That is adenosine diphosphate. Then from one pyruvate molecule, again they receive one phosphate and then become ATP and then again they will receive another phosphate and become ATP. ATP again releases one phosphate molecule become ADP. It is a cyclic reaction continuously it takes place. When it will become ADP you will get a doubt. It becomes ADP when the energy levels comes down. When the energy levels will come down? When the energy is utilized for an activity. So you have learned that any activity where energy is utilized is called what activity? Anabolic process. Now you understood? In anabolic process, energy is utilized. In catabolic process, energy is released. Is that clear? Now we are moving to the Differences between respiration and burning. 
there are two continuous processes children so respiration is breaking down process by which a living cell oxidizes organic substances that is glucose and releases carbon dioxide water and energy respiration is a catabolic process of releasing energy from glucose for carrying out life processes this is what you have learned in your previous part of the lesson now now what is then combustion or burning burning is it burning is compared liberation of energy but it is not respiration how it differs with the respiration we are going to learn now step by step respiration is a cellular process which means it occurs in the living cells whereas combustion is a non cellular process suppose you take a paper take max stick put it on that it start burning and ash will come down children you will find fire also keep this reaction in your mind is it clear now we are keeping that in mind and studying both together now occurs at body temperatures can you do burning of paper at body temperatures no but respiration takes place in our body continuously that is it is occurring in body temperature whereas combustion occurs at high temperatures at ignition temperature that is when you burn the paper a lot of heat is liberated is that clear biochemical process bio means life chemical means chemical process so that chemical process which takes place inside the life is respiration physiochemical process outside is it clear not in the living organisms energy is released as atp and little heat is released some heat is released all the energy is liberated as heat and light when you burn paper you will see that lot of heat and lot of light is liberated no light energy is produced light energy is produced in combustion here do you see whenever you respire do you see any light behind us or any light coming in our body no it looks so funny isn't it children yes occurs in series of chemical steps which respiration whereas combustion occurs in a single step the moment you put a match stick immediately the paper will burn enzymes are required for the process of respiration enzymes are not required but combustion can is carried out by the heat see children we won't put any enzymes when we are burning the paper is it clear so an example of respiration is aerobic respiration example of combustion is combustion of oxygen and hydrogen into water vapor is it clear yes now we are moving for the next part till now we have learned respiration in general now how the plants respire the entire plant respires children if you keep your hand outside will the hand respire you are going by car keep your hand outside the window will the hand separately respire children it will not but in the case of plants every part of the plant such as leaves stem root and even the deepest cell place in any region respires that is why any part cut any part of the plant like stem it will start growing isn't it seeds you put in water they will start respiring that is the example is it clear oxygen in the plants is obtained from the atmosphere through their pre inlets namely stomata in leaves lenticels in stem and general surface body cells are general surface of the roots got it in the that is root hairs so three sides also you here one question will come to you match the following are name the site of respiration the in the plants stomata in leaves lenticels in stem general body surface area of roots like that you write now here you are going to learn an important point with respect to agriculture plowing or tilling of the soil creates tiny air space around soil particles and provide the source of oxygen for the roots so the place between one soil particle and another soil particle there is oxygen that is very important for plants 
Waterlogged and compact soil does not have air spaces which affect respiration of the roots. During their time, due to photosynthesis, the leaves produce oxygen, some of which is used in respiration and the rest is diffused out. The carbon dioxide produced during respiration in the leaves serves as a raw material for photosynthesis. That is the reason why we say photosynthesis is exactly opposite to respiration. At night, even the leaves obtain oxygen from the atmosphere and give out carbon dioxide. Hence, we should avoid sleeping under a tree at night. However, sleeping under a tree during hot midday is definitely not good as one gets both oxygen due to photosynthesis and coolness due to transpiration. Transpiration. It's very good, but it's not good, why children? Because there is a danger of snakes, wild animals, etc. So, in olden days, they used to say, do not sleep under the trees in the daytime. Is it clear? Now, we are moving to the stomata, part by part. Okay, stomata. Stomata are tiny pores present mostly on the lower surface of the leaves and on young green stems. They remain open during the day but closed during night. Gaseous exchange takes place through stomata by diffusion. Lenticels. In certain trees, the mature roots in woody stems have tiny openings called lenticels. They remain open all the day time. These help in the exchange of gases by diffusion. Root hairs. General surface of roots. Root hairs are extension of the epidermal cells. Oxygen present in between the soil particles is absorbed by the root hair through diffusion. The absorbed oxygen passes from one cell to another cell of the root by diffusion. Similarly, carbon dioxide diffuses out from root cells into the soil. In previous class, that is 8th standard, you have learned how water molecules, oxygen molecules by come out, oxygen getting in, carbon dioxide coming out and the processes by name you have learnt osmosis, diffusion, isn't it? Transpiration. Think all that, bring all that processes in your mind so that the lesson will be more easy for you. For understanding, you should always connect to the previous lessons too. Okay, now we are moving for the two kinds of respiration. On the basis of oxygen utilization, a respiration of two types, aerobic and anaerobic respiration. From your lower classes also, you have learned the two kinds of respiration, namely aerobic respiration, otherwise called as oxybiotic respiration. Aerobic means with air. Respiration is the process of cellular respiration that uses oxygen to produce energy from food. So aerobic respiration uses oxygen. This is the important point. It takes place in higher animals and plants called, and they are called aerobes. Now the equation for aerobic respiration is C6H12O6 plus 6O2 gives rise to 6 carbon dioxide that is 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus 38 ATP molecules. This is the overall reaction children. Enzymes you have to write and you can write either by molecular way or by the words. But 38 ATP is very important in aerobic respiration. Now anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is also called anoxybiotic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is the process of respiration which takes place in the absence of oxygen in which the glucose is derived from food is incompletely broken down into ethanol or ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide with release of small quantity of energy. It takes place in lower organisms like bacteria and fungi and they are called anaerobes. Certain parts of the plants 
like seeds and fruits respire anaerobically. Now, equation C6H12O6 give rise to ethyl alcohol, alcohol or ethanol 2C2H5OH plus 2 carbon dioxide and 2 ATP, 2 adenosine triphosphate. Now, overall reactions we are going to learn in the form of the tabular column. Aerobic respiration one side, anaerobic respiration another side. Anaerobic respiration is also called fermentation. Got it children? At the same time, you should not think all that fermentation is also called as anaerobic respiration. No, anaerobic respiration is called fermentation. Now, anaerobic res aerobic respiration proceeds in the presence of oxygen, proceeds without using oxygen. Got it. End products are carbon dioxide and water. End products are ethanol and carbon dioxide. Due to complete breakdown of food, more energy like 38 ATP is released from one, mole one mole or one molecule of glucose. Due to incomplete oxidation of food, less energy, 2 ATP is released from one mole or one molecule of glucose. Aerobic respiration takes place partly in cytoplasm and partly in mitochondria and it takes place throughout life. An anaerobic respiration takes place entirely in cytoplasm temporarily for short periods. Aerobic respiration occurs in higher plants and animals. Anaerobic respiration occurs in lower organisms like bacteria, yeast, etc. Now, we are going to learn the next topic for today that is respiration in plants and animals comparison. If, children, can you find any differences between our respiration and plants respiration children? Respiration in plants and animals. We are going to learn now respiration in plants. There is no Gaseous transport takes place. Gases simply diffuse in and out by cell to cell diffusion. That means here, you, when you breathe, you clearly see the passage, the track of respiration. You take oxygen, that is inhale oxygen or air through your nostrils. It goes through windpipe to the lungs like that. You will see the passage correctly gaseous transport do you find plants respiring like that like this inhaling and exhaling no that is the first point blood transports respiratory gases in animals the end product of anaerobic respiration in plants is ethanol and carbon dioxide the end products of anaerobic respiration in animals is a lactic acid amount of heat produced in, is very less in respiration in plants whereas amount of heat produced is more compared to plants in animals. Now respiration in plants and animals we have seen now. Is it clear? So now we are moving to the another topic. Respiration previously when I was teaching you I told you respiration is exactly opposite to photosynthesis. How is that? Let us see now. Respiration and photosynthesis in comparison. Okay. In many respects, respiration and photosynthesis in plants are distinctly opposite processes. The requirements of one are the products of other. And therefore, they are complementary to each other. This is the reason why we cannot conduct an experiment on a plant respiration during daytime. Why children? During daytime, photosynthesis also takes place. Got it? In light. The fundamental differences between plants and respiration we are going to learn in a tabular column. Respiration, one side. Photosynthesis, one side. Respiration occurs in all living organisms. Photosynthesis occur only in all green plants algae and in some bacteria which contain 
chlorophyll. Respiration occurs in the present. Glucose and oxygen are the reactants of this process. Here, respiration occurs in the presence of glucose and oxygen. Whereas, photosynthesis occurs in the presence of carbon dioxide, water and light energy. So, what are the reactants of the photosynthesis, carbon dioxide, water and light energy? Isn't it? So, whatever are the reactants of the photosynthesis are the end products of respiration. Whatever are the reactants of photosynthesis, respiration are the end products of photosynthesis. Now, let us see now. Now, the third point. Respiration Carbon dioxide, water and energy are the byproducts. In photosynthesis, glucose, oxygen and water are the byproducts. Now, re respiration occurs at all times. When respiration stops, we say the organism is dead, isn't it? But photosynthesis occurs only in the presence of light, that is in the daytime. Carbon dioxide is liberated as an end product during respiration. Oxygen is liberated as an end product during photosynthesis. Got it? In respiration, chemical energy is partly converted into heat and partly into useful energy for various activity. In photosynthesis, light energy is converted into chemical energy which is stored. Now, in photosynthesis, food is broken down or oxidized to release energy. It is a destructive catabolic process. Whereas photosynthesis is a constructive process. Food or glucose is manufactured and it is also called like an anabolic process. Got it. Respiration result in loss in weight. Respiration, photosynthesis result in gain in weight. The chemical reaction of respiration is C6H12O6 plus 6O2 gives 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus energy. Whereas the chemical reaction of photosynthesis is 6CO2 plus 6H2O gives C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Got it. Here you have to write on the equation energy. Is that clear? So diagrammatically we have taken now chloroplast here. Chloroplast absorbed light energy from the sun. Got it. And photosynthesis took place. The blue arrows are showing. They enter into mitochondria. And in mitochondria, cellular respiration takes place. Got it? So, the chemical energy is converted. The sun, uh, solar energy is converted into food. Food is glucose. And finally, it gets converted into ATP, chemical energy. Is that clear? So, here the two structures, what you are seeing is, green color one is chloroplast. And the red structure is mitochondria. Is that clear? Now, I hope you all understood the lesson. And very well. Thank you. Study well children. Okay.